while it may be 2023, we still have last year's options to pick from. And that's pretty much in every store. As you can see here, we have the QN900B. Now, this doesn't just stop there. We also have some LG OLEDs from last year as well. And this theme is gonna continue across pretty much every retail store that I've seen. A lot of people get hung up on the idea of having the brand new latest and greatest like the LG G3 or C3 or the S95C. But these TVs from last year not only are on sale nine times out of 10, but also you get a pretty awesome idea of just how much there is on the market that you can benefit from. I mean, take this smaller OLED, the A90K. You can get a great picture quality for not a whole lot of money. And I think it introduces a new kind of conversation of like, really we should be buying TVs for a year behind, not necessarily the current year, because it almost seems like every year you're playing catch up. Like right now we're in April of, or May of 2023. And you're seeing pretty much everything you saw last year towards the end of the year. Now, we usually have to wait an entire year before they start rolling out something new, sitting on old models. And I think that's something that gets annoying as time goes on because it's like we're ready and excited for the latest and greatest, but we don't necessarily get it straight away. But is that a bad thing? Is that a problem? My personal opinion on this is no, because even though I would like to have something brand spanking new like the A95L, it's not to say the A95K, for example, produces an ugly picture that just nobody should ever want to see. And I think these start very intelligent conversations as to how strategically, when things are very expensive, we can save a little bit of a buck. I mean, I don't think you'll save much on the A95K ever, but I could be wrong. I mean, maybe in like three years from now, we can get 1699, but that's nowhere here or there. I think when we look at TVs in Best Buy and retail stores, while no, they're not calibrated, they do give us an idea of the vibrancy they can produce while in their coolest color temperature. And the importance of that is when you're in the coolest color temperature, you're able to see those primary colors very well, which is why every single retailer does this. Again, it's just like a way of drawing your eye to a particular panel to do a certain thing. And honestly speaking, I haven't really been impressed with the Sony's, like the X95Ks we're seeing here. I tend to go more in line with what I've seen from Samsung. The frame, however, is an exception. I think the frame is a very ugly TV that kind of has a pale, washed out look to the screen that, I don't know, I personally just can't get past. Some people can, and God bless them, I'm just unfortunately not one of them. And as far as Neo QLED and the 8K line of televisions, I don't really find myself being sold on the 95B series. I just can't run with it. Not the S95B, the Q and 95B. Simply put, the brightness on it is impressive. Like, I think that's one thing that Samsung does great. But overall, their OLED line, like the brand new uh, S95C and the S95B at the bottom, or S S90C at the bottom, those two are going to be like really good. I mean, they have great throw of color, they come in a wide range of sizes, and I'm sure the prices will eventually be right. But honestly speaking, I think like more often than not, you're going to find options are a little bit redundant. And the message of this video is simply put, go shopping around and look for deals instead of the latest and greatest, and you'll walk out the winner.